In Luke 2.26, we encounter the story of the mother of our Lord, the one who bore him. Her name is Mary, also known as Miriam, the sister of Moses and Aaron. One of the greatest figures in Christian history, she is a pivotal woman for all humanity. From humble beginnings to a central role in salvation history, Mary's story is one of steadfast faith, humility, and divine grace. Throughout the Gospels, she is described as gentle, loving, and angelic. Yet, she is also the strongest of women for witnessing the crucifixion of her son on the cross. Beyond her role as the mother of Jesus, the wife of Joseph, and the perpetual virgin in Catholic tradition, what do you know about the Blessed Virgin Mary? Today, we will delve into her life, her death, her miraculous apparitions, and her assumption. We want to clarify that this video does not intend to promote any conscious bias or religious affiliation. Our goal is to present the historical and theological events surrounding the Virgin Mary, with no intention to cause discord or offense to any beliefs. If this is your first time encountering our video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of our content. And in the name of God, may you receive many blessings. Amen. Let's start with her name Mary. Mary is not just a simple name, it carries profound meaning. In Hebrew, this name originates from Miriam, meaning bitterness or rebellion reflecting Mary's life as the mother of Jesus. She is revered for her purity and grace, often called the Blessed Virgin Mary, an icon of virtue and devotion. Her virgin conception and role as the mother of Jesus have made her a sacred symbol of maternal spiritual love. In the Bible, there is no mention that Mary remained perpetually virgin. Mary was a virgin when she conceived Jesus, as recounted in Luke 134-38, but she did not remain a virgin forever. According to Matthew 125, Joseph did not consummate his marriage with Mary until after she gave birth to Jesus and named him. This indicates that after Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary had a normal marital relationship and had other children. Jesus had four half-brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas Matthew 13.55. He also had half-sisters, although they are not named specifically Matthew 13.55-56. God bestowed grace and favor upon Mary by granting her many children, which in that culture was seen as the clearest sign of blessing. One of the most significant events is the Annunciation, where the angel Gabriel announced to Mary about the conception of Jesus. This event is recounted in the Gospel of Luke. Gabriel visited Mary, a young virgin from Nazareth, and greeted her greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you, Luke 1.28. Mary was perplexed but listened as Gabriel told her she would conceive a son and name him Jesus, the Son of the Most High. Gabriel explained that the Holy Spirit would come on her and the power of the Most High would overshadow her, resulting in the conception of Jesus, who would be called the Son of God. Mary's response was one of humility and obedience, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled, Luke 1.38. This act of faith by Mary is foundational in Christian theology, demonstrating complete trust and cooperation with God's plan. The Annunciation marks the beginning of the fulfillment of the Messiah's promises and God's direct intervention in human history through the incarnation of his Son. Mary is seen as the new Eve, whose obedience contrasts with the disobedience of the first Eve, bringing hope and redemption to humanity. Another poignant moment involving Mary occurred during Jesus' crucifixion. The Gospel of John describes this scene with simplicity yet deep emotion standing near the cross of Jesus where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene, John 19.25. This scene not only highlights Mary's presence, but also underscores the unity among the women who supported Jesus until the end. Mary standing at the foot of the cross is a powerful symbol of loyalty and maternal love, adding emotional depth to the story of Christ's passion. Mary not only witnessed, but also intimately participated in the pain and suffering of her son. Many theologians see this as a continuation of the let it be done that Mary said at the Annunciation, demonstrating her continuous cooperation with God's divine plan. Just as Mary accepted her role as the mother of God with unwavering faith and obedience, she also accepted the anguish of witnessing her son's sacrifice, displaying steadfast faith even in the darkest moments. Mary's presence at the foot of the cross is also a symbol of the church. In John 19, 26, 27, Jesus, seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved, said to Mary, woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. This act of entrustment is a profoundly theological moment where Mary is given to humanity as a spiritual mother. This forms the foundation of Marian doctrine, viewing her not only as the mother of Jesus, but also as the mother of all Christians, 
a role she continues to fulfill through intercession and maternal care. The crucifixion is the culmination of the redemption and Mary's presence emphasizes both the human and divine aspects of this event. She not only witnessed humanity's redemption but also uniquely participated in it. Her presence at the foot of the cross silently testifies to her acceptance of Christ's redemptive suffering. The image of Mary's suffering alongside Jesus resonates with Simeon's prophecy, who foretold that a sword will pierce your own soul to Luke 2.35. This indicates the suffering that she would endure as part of the divine plan. This shared suffering between mother and son provides a model of faith and perseverance for Christians, with Mary as the sorrowful mother, becoming an icon of hidden strength and spiritual fortitude inspiring believers to find meaning and hope even in the most painful experiences. Next, we will share with you the mysterious apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Throughout the world, there are three significant instances of Mary's apparitions at Fatima, Lourdes, and Guadalupe, each bringing messages of hope, peace, and repentance that have profoundly impacted the faith of believers. In Fatima, Portugal, in 1917, three young shepherd children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, witnessed multiple apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Appearing in a white garment, holding a rosary in her hand, Mary asked them to pray for the conversion of sinners and world peace. The events culminated with the miracle of the sun witnessed by thousands on October 13, 1917, where the sun appeared to dance in the sky. This event strengthened the faith of the Christian community, emphasizing Mary's urgent message of prayer, repentance, and devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Since then, Fatima has become a significant pilgrimage site, attracting millions of visitors seeking to connect with the messages of peace and repentance conveyed by the Virgin Mary. At Lourdes, France in 1858, a young girl named Bernadette Suberus experienced a series of visions of a woman dressed in white who identified herself as the Immaculate Conception. During these apparitions, Mary revealed a spring with healing properties and Lourdes remains renowned for documented and church-investigated healing miracles. The messages of Lourdes underscore the importance of prayer and repentance. Despite its simplicity and humility, Bernadette became a central figure in the veneration of Mary, and Lourdes continues to be a place where many seek physical and spiritual healing, renewing their faith in divine promises. The apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico in 1531 to the indigenous Juan Diego is perhaps one of the most symbolically and culturally significant apparitions. Mary appeared to Juan Diego on Tepeyac Hill, requesting the construction of a church in her honor. As evidence of her appearance, she caused roses to bloom in winter and left her miraculous image on Juan Diego's cloak. This cloak is still preserved and displayed at the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, which has become one of the largest pilgrimage sites in the world. The image of Our Lady of Guadalupe has become a symbol of faith and cultural identity for the people of the Americas. The message of love, compassion, and protection from Mary continues to resonate deeply with believers. Another significant apparition related to the book of Revelation in the Bible describes a mysterious and symbolic figure known as the Woman of the Apocalypse in Revelation 12. This visionary encounter is rich with vivid imagery and profound meaning, which has been the subject of various interpretations throughout Christian history. The Woman of the Apocalypse is depicted as a majestic figure clothed with the sun, standing on the moon, and crowned with twelve stars. This symbolic portrayal has been interpreted in diverse ways by different theological traditions, each emphasizing different aspects of this figure. Some view the woman of the apocalypse as a symbol of the church, representing the redeemed body of believers in Christ. According to this interpretation, her attire of the sun, standing on the moon, and 12 stars symbolize the glory of the church, its obedience to Christ, and the 12 tribes of Israel correspondingly. This perspective underscores the role of the church in the history of redemption and its connection to the promises given to Israel in the Old Testament. Others interpret the woman of the apocalypse as a symbol of Israel, the chosen people of God. Here, the image of the woman reflects the promises made to Israel in the Old Testament and its role in salvation history. The 12 stars symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel, highlighting the continuity of God's people from the Old Testament to the community of faith in the New Testament. A third interpretation, particularly prominent in Catholic tradition, sees Mary as the figure of the woman of the apocalypse. Mary as the mother of Jesus, holds a central role in salvation history. This view evokes images related to Mary in various contexts, such as her purity, her relationship with Christ, and her role as the protector of believers. Regardless of the specific interpretation, Mary represents God's faithfulness to his people in divine protection and spiritual struggles. 
Next, another question that has drawn attention is are both Mary and Joseph descendants of the house of David? In the books of Matthew and Luke, we find two different genealogies of Jesus recorded. Biblical commentators often explain this difference in two distinct ways. According to Matthew 1.1.16, Jesus' genealogy is traced through Joseph with the purpose of establishing the legal right to the throne of David. Conversely, in Luke 3.23-3.38, the genealogy is traced through Mary. Matthew presents Jesus' genealogy starting from Abraham and tracing back to Joseph, Mary's husband. In this lineage, important figures like David and Solomon are emphasized, with Joseph playing the legal role as Jesus' father, legitimizing his claim to David's throne. Jesus inherits the legal authority and the continuity of David's lineage through Joseph. The lineage of the Davidic family fulfills Old Testament prophecies that the Messiah would come from this royal line. Matthew underscores this by stating, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Matthew 1.1, establishing a direct connection to the original promises to Abraham and David. In contrast, Luke presents a genealogy that is considered to be Mary's, starting from Adam and tracing up to Jesus. In this lineage, David is also mentioned, but through Nathan, another son of David instead of Solomon. This shows that Jesus, even biologically, has a connection to David's family through Mary. Luke asserts that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, having a divine lineage, while still maintaining a legal connection to David's family through Mary. The presentation of these two genealogies emphasizes the legitimacy of Jesus as the Messiah in both aspects legal through Joseph and biological through Mary. This dual lineage reinforces the idea that Jesus fulfills Old Testament prophecies predicting the appearance of a Messiah from David's lineage. Specifically, the prophet Isaiah writes, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse from his roots a branch will bear fruit. Isaiah 11.1, 1, emphasizing the continuity of David's family. Similarly, the prophet Jeremiah predicts, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will rule reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land, Jeremiah 23.5. The significant roles of Mary's and Joseph's genealogies extend beyond fulfilling prophecies to underscore the power and faithfulness of God in maintaining promises through generations. The descent of both Mary and Joseph from the Davidic line is not a random coincidence in history, but part of a divine plan to establish Jesus as the legitimate Messiah. Prayer dedicated to Mary, such as the Hail Mary and the Rosary, forms the center of believers' spiritual lives. The Rosary, in particular, is a meditative journey through the life of Christ seen through Mary's eyes. The repetition of prayers combined with meditation allows believers to delve deeply into a state of reverence, seeking Mary's courage to pray for their needs and intentions. Mary is regarded as a powerful intercessor, uniquely bringing human prayers to God. This belief stems from her intimate connection with Jesus, not only as his earthly mother, but also as a faithful disciple who understood and participated uniquely in the mysteries of redemption. Over millennia, stories of miraculous interventions attributed to Mary have strengthened the faith of believers and sustained their devotion. From physical and spiritual healings to interventions in moments of difficulty, Mary is revered as a compassionate mother, always ready to respond to prayers directed towards her. In Catholic theology, Mary plays a significant role, not only as a model of obedience and faith, but also as a living link to the history of redemption. Two important roles of hers are often emphasized Mary as the New Eve and as the Ark of the New Covenant. The comparison of Mary to Eve has existed since early Christianity, reflecting her pivotal role in redemption. This idea is based on physical parallels between Eve and Mary. Eve, according to Genesis, is seen as the mother of all humanity but disobeyed God, causing the fall of mankind. In contrast, Mary is seen as the new Eve, playing a crucial role in humanity's redemption through her obedience and cooperation with God's plan of redemption. Mary's response to the angel Gabriel's invitation with faith and service is seen as a reversal of Eve's disobedience, restoring trust and communion between God and humanity. Additionally, Mary is often compared to the Ark of the Covenant, an ancient relic in the Old Testament containing the tablets of the law, manna, and Aaron's rod. Just as the Ark was the dwelling place of God among the Israelites, Mary is considered the vessel through which God became incarnate as a human. These physical parallels highlight Mary's central role in the story of redemption and her importance as a model of faith and obedience for believers. She is viewed as an exemplary figure of humility and faith, inspiring believers to draw closer to God and walk the path of righteousness and grace. Finally, regarding the death of the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
The doctrine of the Assumption declares that after her passing, Mary was taken up, body and soul, into heaven, without undergoing corruption like other mortals. Although not explicitly stated in scripture, this belief draws from early Christian tradition and apocryphal texts, such as the Transitus Mariae. The Assumption was formally defined as a dogma of faith by Pope Pius XII in 1950, affirming that Mary, after completing her earthly life, was assumed into heavenly glory, body and soul. In Catholic and Orthodox traditions, the Assumption of Mary is celebrated with great reverence and devotion. In the Catholic Church, the Feast of the Assumption, also known as the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, is observed on August 15th each year. It is one of the most significant Marian feasts in the liturgical calendar, marked by special masses, processions, and other forms of veneration. The Eastern Orthodox Churches also observe the Assumption of Mary with solemnity, although the exact date of the feast may vary according to their liturgical calendar. The Assumption is seen as a sign of Mary's holiness and intimate union with Christ. She is regarded as foremost among the saints, assumed body and soul into heaven, anticipating the resurrection and eternal life promised to all believers. The doctrine of the Assumption also underscores the dignity and value of the human body, teaching that the body is not merely a prison for the soul, but an integral part destined for resurrection and eternal glory. By assuming Mary into heaven, body and soul, God honors his earthly mother and anticipates the final resurrection and eternal glory promised to all believers. Mary's legacy and Christian faith is profound and enduring. As the mother of Jesus Christ, she embodies virtues such as faith, humility, obedience, and unconditional love, inspiring generations of believers. Titles bestowed upon Mary, such as Our Lady of Perpetual Help, Queen of Peace, Mother of Mercy, and many others each highlight different aspects of her intercession and care for humanity. Mary's journey is an endless source of inspiration, from the Annunciation by the Archangel Gabriel to her presence at the foot of the cross and her Assumption into Heaven. She faced extraordinary challenges with courage, unwavering faith, and complete surrender to God's will. Her steadfast faith and complete surrender to God's plan shine as radiant examples of living a life of love and service to God and humanity. Mary reminds us of the importance of trusting in the Holy Spirit, even in the most challenging circumstances, and seeking reconciliation and peace in all our relationships. If you have been inspired by this message and wish to reconcile with Jesus Christ our Savior, I encourage you to sincerely reflect in your heart and decide to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. May this be the beginning of a new journey of faith and hope in your life. Finally, thank you for watching our video till the end. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may God's grace be upon you. Amen.